Hello and welcome to the Vixens. We're back. And just because it's been a minute, we need to do a quick recap. So the Vixens had stealthily, along with um, their friend Cademan, had stealthily found a smuggler who brought them to the isle, the secret isle that lies in the middle of the sacred lake, Mukata Suv. And they found this island and they, they pulled up the boat to it and everybody jumped out and Cademan waded down by the boat and the Vixens climbed up the, the rocky, okay. sharp mountain along with um, their friend. And then they got to the top and then they crawled down the middle tunnel of this empty mountain thing. And then they, they, they tracked this weird milky white water and they went into these caverns and they found a statue of Vusek dripping white milk into the stream that led into a pond. And then they searched all over, but they couldn't find the milk of Vusek, the sacred crystal that they were looking for. So disappointedly, they left. And on their way out, they encountered a water elemental creature. Um, and the water elemental creature told them that the sacred crystal had been claimed by someone already. Huh. So the Vixens climbed back up and then they climbed back down. And as they were getting close to getting back to the shore of this rocky island, they saw no boat and they saw Cademan face down on the rocks. And that's where we're picking up. So you guys descend from the rocks, climbing down and you pull your ropes down. And you're like, what the what? And you see Cademan like face down. And you don't see the boat anywhere. So what do you do? I, I'm gonna poke him. I turned into an animal, right? I wanna turn yes. into a really big fish. What was it? The, um, it starts with an S. Oh. I looked it up last sturgeon time. Sturgeon fish. Like, I want to turn into a sturgeon fish. Okay. So before you do that, you check Cademan, and you find that he is unconscious. And you also see, as you check him, that there is a dart in his neck. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. I know herbs and medicine. Is there anything I can do? Yes. You examine this dart, and you examine the wound on him. And with your 17 plus 5, you... You're like, you like smell it and you're like examining it. You're like, this dart is poisoned. Now, as you roll Cademan over, you see that although he's not reacting to your poking, his eyes are open, but he, he's like, and he's still breathing, but he's not moving. And Tetra, you, with your knowledge of like herbs and stuff, you you're not sure exactly what concoction this poison is, but you feel like it is a, it's some kind of thing that paralyzes the victim. And you see Cademan's like eyes are open and he, he kind of like, but well, he can't talk. Okay. It's just I like frozen idea. almost. So I want to go to the water, the sacred water, and I yeah. want to pray and say that I mean no disrespect to whatever the sacred water is representing or protecting and that I need to take some and I'm going to take some water and I'm going to feed it to Cademan. Are you, all right, so you're gonna to pray to Vusek for healing powers. Yes. Okay, you gather some water, you make your prayers. You feed some of the water to Cademan and, and like, it doesn't seem like he's swallowing it and it, you just hear him go like and like like he's choking on it and the water kind of shoots out but he still doesn't move okay what can i do can i try can i try feeding him the milk of boo's ache? but like making uh, it go down his throat <laughs> you know what that's a good question I suppose you could send the fastest oh. climber amongst you, which would be Sorsha, back up the mountain, back down the cylinder tube of the mountain, and 
to acquire some of the white milky stuff and to come back. Um, Sorsha, you. I'm not here. I'm still on the shore. Oh, yeah. Rip. Mm -hmm. So, in short, the answer is you could do that. Wait, if. Never mind. Never mind. I was going to say, if she's on the shore, could she have seen the dude, like, run off? Yes, but you don't know that. We'll get to her in a moment. Okay. That's like another scene in the movie. So, it's <laughs> just you guys and uh, paralyzed Cademan. So, what to do? Okay. Am I down there? Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, you know what? Mantra has a spell. A spell? Oh, is it healing? You have removed poison. I'm dumb. Oh. All right. <laughs> Just do that. <laughs> you cast remove poison. You you begin casting remove poison on Cademan. And after a few moments, you see Cademan's like eyes start to blink and he moves his jaw and he, he like starts to slowly as if he's kind of just waking up and he's like, whoa, and his like tongue is limp, but he starts to move. You guys wait and like after about a minute, he kind of comes back around and he's like, what happened? I, I just blacked out. I, one minute I was looking up to see if you guys were coming down and the next I hit the rock. So you didn't see anything? No, I, I heard something though. I heard the boat. I heard the boat and the oars. I heard the boat going away. And he, he like looking out over the water and he's like, damn that smuggler. He's going to pay for this. Oh no. He's like, how are we going to get back? So we got bamboozled, huh? Almost like y'all should have let the duke fly you, like I said before. Mm. That's what I'm saying. I want to turn into a sturgeon fish, and I want to carry people across. Okay. You can do that, and it will last long enough for you to make the journeys. So when you take the first person across, who I'm going to just say is Cademan because he's lightweight, you get across... You get to Sorsha and the Duke. Now, Sorsha, you were on the, the shore, and there was no, you didn't see the smuggler boat come back. So, like, you're waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally you see this giant wave coming towards you, and you see Cademan, like, water skiing basically behind this fish, and then he, like, jumps off onto the land, and then the, swish, the, swim, uh, the fish swims back. Cademan tells you, that somebody ambushed him and poisoned him and that the, the smuggler with the boat is gone. And he's like, did you see the smuggler? Did I? No. No, I did not. He's like, damn it. Ugh. And he just stomps away and he's, he's angry and pacing back and forth and smoking his pipe. So meanwhile- Can I, can I go hunt for this person? You with could. My, yeah, I'm gonna go on the hunt. And if I see him, I'm literally gonna take, decapitate his ass. Okay. so. You're gonna go do that. Smash cut back to the fish ferry. That's what I'm calling this. It's a ferry back and forth between the island and the shore conducted by a large fish. So um, after two more journeys, everybody's back. And then you unfish yourself, Tetra, and everybody's on the shore and Cademan's pacing back and forth and um, smoking his pipe angrily. Sorsha has left. Now, Sorsha, you We'll begin making a tracking roll. So you've gone off hunting. Okay. You're off up and down the shore looking for anyone. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, back to you guys on the shore, you're all drying off because the water was very cold. You're drying off and you've got like a little fire going and Cademan's like, ah, oh, We've got to get back to town and meet up with the others and find out what happened with this smuggler. And as you guys are there and you're thinking about heading back to town, you see something coming down the path from the north, from the area where town is, coming towards you. Looks like two lights, maybe like on horses or a carriage. Maybe some Maybe lantern a car. torches. Could it be a car? No, cars are not in D and D. Gotcha. 
Got it. But it could be a carriage with a couple torches or lanterns. Huh. Is it so, it's coming towards us? Yeah, you guys are kind of like a little bit out in the open. Hmm. I, I move off to the side just so they don't like, like I'm not too close to it. Okay. But yeah. I want to pass. Should we move away and observe from a little bit further away to make sure that they're not? Mm -hmm. That's a wise move. So everybody yeah. kind of scrambles off, right? You guys kind of go over by some trees. You're kind of hiding and watching. And you see this carriage with like two horses pulling it, just traveling along. And it kind of stops by the, area, by, the, by the shore kind of where you guys were. It looks like a very like wealthy, well-appointed carriage. And the two guards that like, there's one driving the carriage and then there's another one kind of sitting shotgun, like literally with a heavy crossbow. Um, they kind of stop and they're like looking around and the driver kind of holds the reins back and the crossbow guy kind of has his crossbow and he's just looking around. The driver hops off, walks around to the door of the carriage and knocks twice on it. A few moments later, the door opens and you see someone get out of the carriage. And it's, this person is familiar. You've seen this person before. It is the blonde elf. Fine. And you see him get out. And by the way, he's wearing like immaculate armor and he has a sword at his side. He's technically you, the king, right? Yeah. But not the king of Kabul Kailash. He's the king of Malakun. Malakun. So you're you're kind of surprised to see this. So he, he gets out of the carriage and he kind of looks around. He wants us dead, right? And you see, yeah. And you see him, he kind of like grips something around his neck, like some kind of necklace, and you see him like close his eyes. And at this same time as you see him do that, you you're like all clumped and hiding behind the tree, you hear the Duke cry out in pain. You hear him oh. go like, ah, ah, and he's like holding his head and he falls to his knees and he's screaming and blood starts coming out of his nose. And he's like, ah, ah. And uh. when this happens, there's no point in hiding anymore. You see the King look over towards you all And then he raises his fingers and he points at you. And you see his hands start glowing red. Can I, can I just full body tackle him? So it's about 30 feet from like, where you I guys just, are in the trees to where he is. Now, I'm going to have you roll initiative. I'm just decking him. I'm just, abs I just, he's hurting the Duke. Can I uh, shoot him? You could, you could try. Hold on. I'm not here, right? I'm still looking for the... You're, you're off looking, but I'll get back to you in a second because you're going to encounter something. Okay. So... Whoa. Yeah. You actually have the highest initiative because of your absurdly high initiative. Yeah. You see his hand that was glowing red there are flames coming around it, and the flames keep growing into a ball of fire. No, they don't, because I full body tackle his ass. Okay, so you, you're you going to bolt towards him? Yeah, just full, like, I would, like shoulder check. Like okay. football. football All right, here's your roll. All right, not bad. 11 plus 7 is 18. That will actually hit. Do you want to use any of your chi powers for example um I uh, yeah like, i want to i wanted to i want a stunning strike yeah you do i do okay you channel some of your chi you run up and you're like Ho -cha! and you like shoulder check him just before he's about to release the fireball mr kraken and you successfully interrupt him he falls yeah. back stunned up against the carriage and will remain so for a to be determined amount of time. Okay. Next up 
is mantra. So you saw the the king was just about to unleash some flaming death upon you. You saw Wo just like like ninja run super fast, shoulder check him into the carriage, right? And you see, by the way, that the moment this happens, the pain which the Duke was feeling seems to stop. And he's like, oh, and he and like he stops screaming. But you also notice that the guy with the crossbow is like spinning around and about to aim it at whoa. So what do you do? Um can I cast Thunderous Smite or can I not because I just used You could use your movement to run up and attack yeah. with Thunderous Smite. You could. Who oh, now who are you attacking? The king who is stunned or the crossbow man? The crossbow man. Okay. All right, you run up, swing out your sword, thunderous smite. 11 plus 7 is 18. That will be a hit for a yes amount of damage. 14 plus the smite. Woo. 22 damage on that. Um, and he is blown back. You carve down on him and he, the, the sound of thunder just explodes. Not only does he fly back, but the guy that was, um, that opened the door for the king also flies back. Okay, Tetra, you are up. I want to shoot him. With your bow? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stay from a vantage point in the tree and I'm going to shoot him. You six plus six. If you're, sh are you shooting the king? Yes. You miss. Oh, no, wait. You get advantage because he is um, immobilized. 17 plus, that'll be a hit. Okay. Thank you. Longbow. Eight. Plus six, no, plus six, plus three, 11 damage. Nice. You fire off a shot, hitting the king. And next round will begin. Sorsha, you're about 100 yards away. But because of your passive perception, you hear someone scream back towards where Cademan was. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to roll for Cademan. Cademan is going to be rather tricky and use fairy fire on your opponents who does not make a save, does not make a save, and does not make a save. So you see Cademan cast a spell and all of a sudden the Two guards and the king are outlined in a green glow. And you, you feel like you have some kind of advantage to attack them. So, Sorsha, you hear this scream to the south of you. Does it sound like the Duke? You can't tell. It sounds like a man, and it sounds like painful screaming. Okay, well... If I don't know who it is, and I'm just going to assume that my girls, the vixens, are kicking ass and making a man scream, and I'm going to keep looking for... You know what? That is good role-playing. Um, I commend you for not being meta. <laughs> Although I will say that now your friends might die, but that's fine. All right. <laughs> so next round... I wouldn't know that. Yeah, you wouldn't. That's true. Um, okay, next round. Next round. May I just say, none of us hesitated. Not a single hesitation. That's just true. Throwing down. All right. You're up, whoa. Okay. So. You have a lot of different things that you could do. Remember that you could do multi attack um, if you wanted to just wail a bunch of fists and feet kick things on him. Yeah. 
sometimes I get bored with my weapon only being my body, but yeah. Mm, is he still stunned? You'll find out. Is anybody in any of the gals in immediate danger? No, nah, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Then I'll get Mr. Prince Man, Mr. King Man. Um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna give him a little spin kick, but like three times. Okay. Yeah. Three of kicking. Um, yep. You have advantage because of fairy fire and because your friend is also flanking him. So that's one hit. Another hit. And a third hit. Okay. Woo. Damage. Six, four, and five. So 10, 15. Plus 12 is 27 total damage. You're like, <laughs> like Liu Kang. In, um, and he's like, he's like, yeah, you're just kicking him up against the, the like you <laughs> triple spin kick him up against the, the carriage. Sick. All right, he's going to make a roll. He seems to not be paralyzed. He pulls out his sword and steps away from you all in a defensive position. Mantra, you're up. Um, who's left? There are, well, the one guard that you, the crossbow man that you smote is very, very, very wounded. The other All guard's right. not wounded, and the king is a little bit wounded. Finish him. Finish End the it. guard. Period. First attack is a hit. Second attack is also a hit. Total damage, seven plus eight is 15 plus 12. is 27. Wow, he's dead. He's gone. You're like, whoosh, whoosh, dead. Tetra. Uh, I want to shoot him again. Shooting the king. Yeah. With advantage. Uh, 17 plus uh, 6 will hit. That is a hit. Uh, but not much damage, but still that's okay. So you do another 5 damage. Uh-huh. At this point, Cademan continues concentrating on fairy fire, but you see him pull out a dart and he starts running towards the king. And he jumps, and while he's in the air, he holds the dart against his knee and jams his knee with the dart on it into the king. Hitting for a ludicrous four damage. All right. Um the Duke, the Duke rises to his feet. Now you're the only person standing next to the Duke at this point, Tetra. And you see him like wipe the blood off of his face. And then he looks across the way at his brother. And you see, he just points his finger and energy shoots out of his finger. And surrounds the King. You see this energy, this almost like bluish electrical energy hit the king and it looks like it's just electrocuting him for a moment but then it like dissipates and the king does not look happy oh. top of the order whoa wait have i found the guy no you haven't you're still running around looking for the smuggler i'm never gonna find him in my you might um <laughs> Your first roll was not successful, so I, I will make another roll for you. Um, whoa, you're up. Okay. Um, I'm in offense. You're right up on the king. Yeah, and okay. Mm -hmm. Can I can I eye gouge him? I'm you gonna eye gouge him. 
Sure. I'm going to try to eye gouge him. Oh, my God. Is it a nat 20, baby? Yeah, it's a nat 20. Look yes, at sir. that. Yes, sir. Look at that. So, using the Bill Allen damage alternative scoring system, you do the maximum damage for that attack plus the additional die, which is a four, so that's 10, plus four. Yeah. You're like, <clears throat> now I'm gonna say that you- Do his eyes fall out? No, you, you don't rip out his eyes, but you, you, you hit him hard enough in the eyes that he will be blinded for- Forever. <laughs> one round. But you still get two more attacks. So your second attack is a hit. Third attack is also a hit. So that's two more damage rolls. So four plus four is eight, plus four is tw 12. So 12 more damage. So the, you're like, and then sha -sha, and you punch him twice. And he's just, you're like wailing on him. And you could tell like he can't see and he's just kind of, backing up and trying to defend himself against your attacks. Mantra, you're up. You notice that the other guard has pulled out a sword and is going after Woe now, because Woe is attacking the king. Not Woe. What do you do, my Antra? Sorry. Uh, can he see me? Yes. Like, you're on one side of him, Woe's on the other. So if you attack the guard, you you have advantage because he's glowing still. Okay, I'm gonna attack the guard then. Okay. First attack is a hit. Second attack is a hit. Damage. Eight plus seven is fifteen. Plus twelve is twenty-seven. Oosh. Whoosh, he drops. He he, you kill him before he even a, is able to swing his sword at Woe. So now it's just the king. All right, Tetra, you're up. Um, can I can I do lightning on the king? Is or would that be dangerous to anyone else? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, you could you could call lightning. I suppose that's a thing that you could do. Now, the question is, will Woe be affected? That is the question. Do it anyway. Um, <laughs> no, because if I don't do that, I'm going to do something else. <laughs> okay. Call Lightning would do more damage for sure. Um, huh. Each creature within five feet of that point. So woe would take damage. Okay, then instead, how could I? Although, wait, no, hold on. You could you could concentrate on the point of call lightning to be behind the king. I'm gonna and do that. He's in the radius of the of the pain and suffering, but woe is not. So I'm gonna do that. that. You're very smart. Right. Yes, that. <laughs> you reach up to the clouds. And you demand that lightning happen. And an arc of lightning shoots down from the clouds right behind the king and sparks around and whips around wildly. The king must make a deck save, which oh, he's at he's at disadvantage. So a six plus four is not good enough because your spell attack bonus is 13. Um, he will be affected by lightning damage and take 3d10, which is a lot. 10, 5, 7, 22 lightning damage. Ooh. Too bad it's not cloudy, otherwise you get a, a bonus. Um, you guys see this arc of lightning just nail the ground and erupt and just <laughs> and he gets like electrocuted from behind. Nice. But, he, but he's still standing. After you do this, you you see you've your action of calling the lightning down upon him has somehow inspired the Duke and the Duke tries to do his his magic blast again on his brother. The 19 for a hit. 
14, 15. You see three arcs of energy shoot out. 10, 14 plus 12 is 26. And now, now the king just gets nailed by three of these blasts of this eldritch power that shoot out of the duke's hands. All right, the duke. The duke blindly turns and swings his sword. So I'm going to have him roll with disadvantage to swing his sword at woe. So he has to take the lower of the two rolls, which is probably... Woe has a pretty good AC, actually. So that nine is not going to be enough. Oh, yeah, it is. I'm sorry. All right. So he hits Woe for 12 damage. So Woe, you get sliced as he blindly swings for 12 damage. I will make a note okay. of that. Where? Um, just like across your arm. Like you you see him swinging wildly, so you kind of duck back, but he just like like cuts the, the edge of your shoulder and, and arm. Okay. All right. Top of the order. Woe is up. What do you do? So he just sliced me. Oh up. no, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting about Cademan. Damn it. Um Cademan attacks again with a knee dart. That is a hit. For, actually, that's pretty good for eight damage. Good job, Caden. All right, you're up. What do you do? So he just sliced me up. Um, I think I'm gonna try to grab his like arm, like here, because he just like tried to, you know, like hit me with a knife. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then try to like break his elbow with some force of my body, like okay. my. Oh. Just gonna... You invoke the power of chi, and you will do extra damage in the form. Oh, that's a hit. That's also a hit, and that is a hit. So you're like, Kaka cha! Precisely. Three, four, seven, nine, 16, and 14 is 30 damage. You just disrupt his arm. Like, you pop his arm out of its socket. The king is actually very wounded right now. Nice. Um, Mantra, you're up. There are no guards. It's just woe, you, and the king, and a massive bolt of lightning that just keeps sparking and arcing right behind the king. Um, well, what's the king doing? Um... He was blinded and blindly swinging his sword at Woe. Okay. Um, can I try to, like, disarm him? Yes. Yes, you can. And because Cademan's still concentrating on the fairy fire, you have advantage. So I will roll. Your first attempt to disarm. Whoa. Really do need a dice tray. All right, good thing you have advantage because I rolled a 13 and a one. So you'll take the 13 with advantage with your plus seven for longsword is enough. Now there will be a check, a contested strength check. You have a 17. The Duke or the king has a 17. It's a tie. Let's roll again. You have a... 16, no, 17. The Duke has a 8. You cut across and you, you cut his hand and he drops his sword. Now you do have a second attack. Do you want to attack him? I want to like talk to him. I don't want to kill him. You want to grapple him? Yeah. Okay. So you, you, you basically slap his hand with your sword. He drops his sword and then you just run up and try to like put him in a lock. Your grapple is a 16 plus 7, 23. He has to make a strength check to oppose that or he is grappled. He fails. He 
get an eight plus his meager strength. So you have him in a bear hug. Oh, now you're going to take lightning damage. I think it's fair for me to tell you that in advance. If you go up to bear hug him, you're going to get electrocuted. Do you still bear hug him and take the damage? Or, or do you bear hug him and pull him away from the lightning? Because then you can make a deck save. And if you make your save, you'll only take half the damage. Okay. Or do you not bear hug him? Bear hug and take all the damage. Bear hug and pull him away and take bear half hug, damage. Bear hug and pull away. Okay. Your deck save is monumentally successful as I rolled a 20 for you. So you will only take half of the 3d10 damage, which is incredible because I rolled a one, one, and a two. So you would take four, you only take two. He takes two damage as well. Um, you pull him out of the electrical field and he's very wounded. He's cut, he's beat up and bruised up. He's been electrocuted. Uh, blinded, although he's blinking his eyes and he's he's struggling with you, but you have him in a solid hold. Okay, Tetra, you are up next. You see that Mantra just captured the king. Okay, so are we done fighting then? Should we, like, tie him up? Can I tie him up? You can run over there and help tie him up. That would help. Yeah. Um. Okay. You run over there. You... As you're running over there, you you get your rope out, you start tying them up. The Duke is running with you. And um, Cademan's just like standing back, like waiting with his knee dart to determine whether or not he should attack. And he's kind of has a spell ready. At the top of the round, whoa, you see um, Mantra holding the king. And Tetra and the Duke are running up and they're like quickly trying to rope him up. Okay. And you and Cademan are sitting there just kind of ready to attack. Mm, so I have to do something? It doesn't have to be a fist. It could be, you could say something, you could do anything I'm else. Just gonna stand guard. Be okay. very aware of our surroundings. Okay. Be very aware of like making sure nobody's coming up to us or anything, and just make sure he's like not looks like he's gonna get away or anything. Okay. All right. He stops struggling with you, Mantra, after you guys have tied up his arms and his hands, and then you continue to use fifty more feet of rope. You guys just move the boxes. Sad. Damn it. There's no Karafa to help me. All right, good. So um, I hope the boxes didn't move. I had a low battery percentage notification that may or may not have shut off my camera for one second. Well, the boxes did move. <laughs> oh, man. You know what's funny is that you're just going to stay in those boxes because I don't have Karafa to help me and I don't want to take like 15 minutes to do that. So, okay. Um, All good. After a few minutes, you guys find yourselves with a tied up king. Um, and the Duke actually tore a piece of cloth off from one of the dead guard's shirts and made a gag to gag his mouth. And as he's doing that, he explains. My brother is powerful spellcaster. We must make sure he cannot speak his spells. My bad, er. And then the Duke takes another rip of clothing off of a dead guard and puts a blindfold around the king. My brother is powerful spellcaster. We must make sure he cannot see to cast his spells on you. So, after this process, takes about a minute, um, Sorsha runs up. She's, she runs up with her weapons out. But, Sorsha, you see your friends uh, next to a carriage, next to two dead guards, 
and you see the blonde elf, the king, who is very tied up with a blindfold and a gag. Um, did I find anything while I was looking? No, you did not find the smuggler. SMH. All right. Um, can I suggest that we like get like a snake or something to like venom him so that he's like more weak, like permanently? Well, we you see that he's pretty beat up as it is. Uh, I mean, it doesn't hurt to like poison him or something just in case because you know he's gonna heal. Yes. If worse comes to worse, I can turn into a poisonous snake, can I? Or is that good? Well, yeah, you could. The, the Duke suggests okay. something. He's, he says, I do not think my brother would travel alone with just two guards. We should go. We should take him and go because there could be more of his soldiers coming. Okay. And he looks to you, Sorsha, and he's like, can you find a place far away from here for us to go and hide? So I like start doing my uh, tracker stuff. Yeah. So you you kind of like survey the land. You're like, follow me. And so you kind of head west, away from the lake, away from town. You guys are all kind of moving quickly. Um, I'm going to assume that Mantra, being the strong one, will carry the king. And, and uh, you guys did you guys find anything while you were out on the island? So yeah. So talk amongst yourselves as you guys are kind of leaving the area. Sorsha's leading. You're all kind of in a group moving through the, the the kind of open land and through the trees and through the wilderness. Speak. So good oh. job, everybody. <laughs> good job. Please we killed man. that. Um, what's it called? When we were on the mountain, we... <laughs> Is that what we're talking about? When we were on the mountain, we... We, the the milk of you sake wasn't there. Oh. Yeah. Uh the um wait, not a moment. Do we know they're called the Medusas? No, you don't. Okay. Um on not a moment. Um another group came and took it already. Yes. And we have to find them. Right. Perhaps. Maybe we should kill them. I, I that wouldn't be my immediate. I, if they don't agree with our ideologies to do send everyone back, then we kill them. Uh, okay, maybe we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. <laughs> For now, we need to find a safe place to camp out where the soldiers can't reach us. Priorities. I'm taking off there. I got a spot. So you guys follow Sorsha for a, a good half an hour. And finally, you find this craggy kind of rocky area with a lot of trees and, and bushes and stuff. And Sorsha finds this little, it's not even like a full size cave. It's like one of those like overhangs, you know, like at, you know, like at Starved Rock where there's like an overhang and there's like just sand and dirt and stuff. And there's like a little Creek. So she finds this spot. You guys get there and find a dry spot. You make a little fire. You set the King down. And of course, Cademan's like paranoid. He's like, don't, don't, don't take his gag off. We got to watch him. And then he lights up his pipe. So the Duke is like, we must find out what my brother knows, why he has come here. Can I ungag him, but still keep his like eye, eyes closed and like just He's slap like, him across the face and tell him to tell us what we know, what he knows? Yes, sure. All right. So you take the gag out and the king is like, you do realize that I heard everything you said. Okay. Of course I knew that the milk of Vusek would not be there. I wasn't here to acquire it from you. Why are you here? I'm here for the artifact. The uh, one that Mantra has. Yeah, good luck with that, bud. Have nuts. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I don't think you're in a place to be making demands from us. Yeah, but... big, big and bold of you to say can that you heard I, Can I take Wait. my knife, Bill, and can I cut off the tip of his nose? Or can you, can you just like, 
put it right. under his face, pull, do that his face, pull his tongue out, and cut off part of his tongue. <laughs> so, so I want, I'm doing nose right now. Just the, the, the Duke, the Duke puts his hand up. He's like, please wait. It'd like, be a little nice. Okay, and, Duke, and, he's the one who put you in like a coffin for the last like 3,000 years. I'm cutting off the tip of his fucking nose. He, the Duke is like, brother, why do you need the artifact if you do not wish to open the portal? And the king says, in my time when I was captured by them, I realized, brother, that Perhaps you are right. Perhaps it is possible to open the portal and to allow you and those who wish to go with you to return to a Rakazine. Okay, if that but, was true, if that was but, true, then he would let us do our shit and he wouldn't want to take it from us because that's bogus. You're lying. Cut off the tip of his nose. Do you really? Yes. Okay. He, I mean, he can't move away. He can't even see that you have the knife there. So you... You slice off the tip of his nose and he cries out and he's like, ah, he's like, damn it. Why have you done that? Ugh. You get for a while, bitch. No I sniffing for I you. Not because you're How's it, right. How's it feel, huh? He, he's like, you fools. I Listen to me. I, I am willing to let you do the ritual, but I really, you must why understand. Are you, why are you fighting us? Why are you fighting? <laughs> You must understand that after the portal is opened, there must be someone on this side to close it. Otherwise, it will destroy all of the continent. Is that what you want? Do you want everyone to die? We can I close it. Sock a badass freaking elf right here. <laughs> I take my sock off and I wrap it and like put pressure so he doesn't like bleed to death. I eat okay. the sock. No. <laughs> so yeah, I, I have another sock. sock. So, so, so I he, eat that one too. He's like, <laughs> like, brother, listen to me. If you and anyone who chooses goes through the portal, it is only for a short amount of time that the artifact can control the power of the portal. If it is not closed quickly enough, horrible things of destruction can happen. Sounds fake, but you know you're not lying. That, yeah, yeah. I I don't really trust this. Can can the Duke do a truth spell? Yes. You see the Duke lean back and he begins chanting. He holds his hand up and you see a golden glow emanate from his hand. And he looks at his brother. And he says, "My brother speaks the truth." Tell me, brother, tell me truthfully. Will you allow us to travel through the portal back to Arakazin? And the king says, yes, I will allow it. But only if you allow me to close it afterwards to make sure that New Wolf Otmai is not destroyed. And will you messing with the portal hurt anyone who went through the portal? Answer her question, brother. I do not know. Truthfully, I do not know what will happen when you go through the portal, but I can tell you, I swear, that I will do nothing to interfere with you going through it. I will only promise to close it afterwards to prevent the continent from being destroyed. And he says, why do you think so long ago we hid the god crystals? We didn't want this to happen. We didn't want them to fall into the wrong hands to destroy the continent. Somebody put his nose back. Do you remove your but, sock? Okay, here's the thing. If you stay here, that means that you're still gonna be king of Malakut and you're like not the rightful king. <laughs> Someone must be the king. Someone must be the king. Yeah, I'll take that duty. I got this girls. <laughs> Energy, it's You were time. wise enough half orc i would let you be the queen but you are not you do not understand what it takes the burden that it takes you think that it was cruel that i entombed my brother but it was a gift to him 
He does not know the things that I have had to suffer in the last 300 years since I've put him to sleep. Listen, I am perfectly capable of forgiveness. I mean, he did eat my finger and I forgave him, but um, what? how could you possibly spin you imprisoning your brother as something good? Did, did he say yes? Was it, was it, did he, was he? Consensual? Was yeah, was it consensual? Of course not. Exactly. For that I will always feel sorrow. I think that I had to can... trick that I had to trick my very own brother in order to put him to sleep. But you do not understand. There are other forces at work on the continent. Those who wished to kill my entire family, including my brother. That is why I had to hide him away. Your brother can defend for himself. Also, maybe if you weren't so busy trying to like impose your ideals on the continent, you could have protected him instead of just putting him to sleep. Can we also, how about we only agree to let you help us if you step down as king and then we establish democracy across all of Malkut? Well, I mean, democracy is kind of a stretch in this era, but um, I'll you know, make wanna... but... hear me out. I want to help. Let's as long as you step down as king and you aren't ruling these people because you're gross. Also, you didn't even originate here. Who are you to lead these people? Exactly. You don't know what they want or what is good for them. He's like, all of the, this will be his, this will be his blindfold. He's like, all of the real leaders, <laughs> all of the true leaders are either primogenitors like myself who came from Arakazine or they are the puppets who serve us. Well, but uh, some well, of the primogenitors, he, he says, the some of the primogenitors, some of the primogenitors are evil. Calling people puppets like, is not did. like a thing a good leader would do. So what if you like didn't do that? We also could help other people, but right now we're focusing on you. You're kind of gross. Stop being a leader and then you- Stop you it. Can- then you can stay here as long as you agree to not be a leader and stop then being who, Then who would be able to care for the people of Malakun if I am gone? You don't who? even care for them. You are just power. Was going to of be- course I care for them. I, have the, I am the one who has kept the, the Malakuni free from the tyranny of the Mantirum. It is only by my power and by my struggles that they have not become slaves to the majocracy. The high um, wizards would wish to control this whole continent. Do you Duke, not understand? Duke, is the um, true spell still on him? Yes. All right. Um, the Duke. The Duke nods. He's like, he speaks the truth. Okay. Okay. He's like, well, and then the king is like, the leader, the high wizard of the Mantirum, is a vile, vile demon, a powerful creature the most powerful wizard on the continent, more powerful than me. Can we send him through the portal? Can we kill him? Do you not understand the reason why I must close the portal if you go through it? If if Vrajator Dumnezu finds out about the portal, he will seek to take the power. He will use the portal to bring horrible, evil creatures that he can control through it so that he can dominate this continent once and for all. So we can't send him through it. So let's kill him. Yeah, <laughs> I like this girl. <laughs> you would not even be able to get close. All right, I think you're underestimating us. I mean, I bet you thought that we couldn't beat you, but here you are, you're half a nose, blindfolded in a cave. You have to be hog tied. I came to see you. I came to speak with my brother, to convince you to join with us. I am coming- Why are you holding a sword? (laughs) Yeah, period. There are other enemies who seek the same things that we seek. I mean, all I'm saying is that during that entire fight, from what I heard from my girls, you didn't try to do anything. Yeah, not once did you try to communicate. You actually were about to kill me with your fire hand. Set yeah, and group. instead of like talking to them, you started torturing your brother. So really, I was simply like going to run. put up a wall of fire around you to prevent you from running away. That's 
control no, sounds not toxic. Toxic. This is a we toxic have to have, a, we have, to have a team meeting we have to sorry buddy when when he says that and he's blindfolded still when he says that the duke nods and is like he you see a mouth like he's telling the truth uh okay so we're gonna it go may be the meeting. truth but it's still messed up yeah he didn't want us to run away so we could cap our asses <laughs> we're so, we're gonna go have a team meeting you're gonna stay here um we're gonna hog tie you before we leave i hog tie him so and also how do we close the portal because if we need to close the portal what if we close the portal and not you because he said he tells you he says you can't close it once you've gone through it only someone on this side of the portal can close it and it has to be someone powerful enough to channel all four of the elemental crystals he said there are only eight people on this continent that can do that, and I am one of them. Uh, and if you don't, if you trust my brother, then you sh you must trust me. I don't hey. want my brother to leave this continent forever. But if that's truly what will make him happy, then I am willing to let him go with you and whoever else wishes to go. But there must be a guardian on this side of the portal to close it. Okay, give us a second. We'll be back. All right, so you guys, you guys regag him, and then Cademan starts playing some music on his lute and singing a song to kind of like make noise to cover, and then the and the Duke is there to watch as well. So you guys, you, the four of you, kind of go off on your own. I like want a little bit. I want the Duke to come. Oh, you want the Duke to come? All right. Yeah. So Cademan stays and watches, and he's playing music and singing a song, um, and you guys and the Duke like go like thirty feet away out of earshot. Okay. And the Duke looks at you guys and he's like, my brother is a complicated person, but he was speaking the truth and he does know more about the power of the crystals and of the use of this artifact than I do. Hmm. As much as I'd like to stay here and bully him for another like 40 hours, uh, we have to figure out what to do with him and make a group decision. So I, I say as much that Duke, do you know how like sometimes people have like pocket portals where they can like keep stuff like objects? Can we put him in one of those like pocket portals and just keep him there? My magic is not this powerful. It can be done but we would need to seek a more powerful wizard to do this. Okay, what about you and Abby do it together? Abby's got hella magic. Uh, she has not this kind of magical knowledge to do this ritual. You could teach her. Teach it to me. It would take a month. Hmm. Um, okay, yeah, I think that's find say whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, I think... Honestly, right now I'm leaning towards more just because I trust the Duke a whole lot. I'm leaning towards his judgment. I do not know what my brother's proposal entails. I do not think we should just give him the artifact, but maybe no. we could listen to his plan and yeah. see if he, if he is speaking the truth, which he is, Perhaps there is a way to acquire the rest of the crystals and to make the ritual and the portal open. Duke, can I have your opinion on this? What if we kept the artifact and then we just let him know closer to the date when we have everything, when we want him to close it, you open it, you hop in, everyone else who wants to go hops in, and then he closes it. But during that time period, we keep all of the artifact and stuff we collected like to ourselves. Yes, I think this could work. What do you think, Mantra? Hmm? Do you all think this could work? I think, okay, I think it could work, but shouldn't we have someone on his side making sure that he closes it and doesn't just like take the power for himself, you know? Well, we aren't going into the portal, but We're who would we? <laughs> so he looks at each one of you and he says, I am not sure if you can go in the portal. 
I'm not sure what would happen because in Arakazin there is not your kind of peoples except for woe. Um, so what would, you don't know what would happen if anybody else went through? Well, I think if you go through to Arakazin, you are the same. And uh, with Unak is the same because he is Nizak, so he can go home. But okay. I do not know what would happen if you go through the portal. Because in Arakazin, there is no elf, no half-orc, no tiefling. I didn't think that we wanted to go through the portal in the first place. I thought that we were just sending you guys through. Yes. Well, I'm going to miss you. Perhaps my brother, if he can be trusted, will allow us to keep in possession of Mantra, the artifact. And then when the time is right, we contact and make the ritual. And your friend, the warlock, Olin, he is going too, to Arakazin, yes? Yeah. So perhaps this is what we do because he has possession of the black orb. I think we tell my brother your, your proposal, Sarsha. Okay. So you guys start heading back. You get back to the camping area. And Cademan's playing music and he's got his pipe in his mouth and he's singing and he sees you guys and he's like, ah, you guys just missed the most epic jam, man. He's like, the king was digging it, weren't you, king? And the king's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you go over, you take the gag out of the king's mouth and the duke nods at you, Sorsha, and is like, explain your your suggestion. Explain your suggestion to my brother. Basically, we keep the artifact and then whenever it is that we collect everything and we open up the portal, we'll let you know so that you're able to close it. The king hears this and he's like, yes. For my brother, I will do this. I will agree to this. And my allies are in possession of another one of the crystals. They have the milk of Busake and they are on their way to acquiring yet another crystal, the Tear of Deepa, the fire crystal. And I understand that you have the breath of them, so there is but one crystal yet to acquire. That is the Fang of Ayuk. Now, were you able to acquire the Fang? No, oh, we have to go fight someone to go get that from a giant race. You, you know where it is, though. Yeah. Then we shall do this. Take this medallion that's around my neck. It is magical, and it will allow you to contact me from a far distance. But only once a day, you can send me a message, and I can respond. You must limit your message in your mind to 25 words. And I, in turn, can respond, but once a day. When you find the Fang of Ayuk, use the medallion to contact me. And I will tell you where to meet for the ritual of opening the portal. In the meantime, I will 
ensure that my allies have acquired the other two crystals and therefore will know where to meet as well. Do we have a deal, brother? And you see the Duke look at you guys. I guess so. <laughs> the Duke nods. He's like, yes, brother. But if he makes any wrong moves... He's on very thin ice. You're on very thin ice. I'm but... hungry for the rest of his nose. Then we have an agreement. Will you release me now so that I can return to the town and move onwards? I to want to take it his nose and cook it over the fire and eat it in front of him. Okay. I do that. Yeah. Do you like un untie him and everything? No, we just we just undo the things where he can watch me cook it and eat it. He's not untied yet. Okay. He watches in disgust. And he says something in their native language to his brother. And, and that's what he the, says. The Duke kind of laughs and he's like, uh <laughs> He just called you nasty. Basically, That's right, yeah. bitch. <laughs> All right, so you eat this little nub of nose meat, and he's disgusted by you. Okay. Is he intimidated? No. Um, <laughs> the the duke begins to untie him. He, uh, you guys have the the his necklace, the medallion. Um, who is going to be the keeper of the medallion? Mantra. Yeah, yeah. I can do it. Okay. So you notice that this medallion, it's on a silver chain and the medallion's like this circular medallion. And it, it has like an engraved image of a skull. It's like a Medusa, but it's like a skeletal Medusa with like snake, skeletal snakes coming out of it. And it's upside down. Um, and as, as the Duke takes the ropes off and frees the king. The king like stands up and stretches out and he's like, well then, I will await your message and I will prepare for the ritual. And he looks at all of you and he nods and he looks to his brother and he nods and then he starts walking off into the darkness. <laughs> And that is where we'll end this episode of The Vixens. Thank you all to everybody for watching, for your patience, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Now I have to get up because there's no Krafa and I have to go switch. So don't say any bad words, girls. Say bye to the fans. Bye. Didn't we bye. like bye. this episode? Bye bye. Bye, fans. Chunky sneakers.